Well, this is lesson three of a four lesson uh, group on the uh, graphics user interface, the, the basic Windows graphics user interface that's common to uh, just about every major graphics uh, oriented program or every Windows oriented program. So we've already done uh, lesson one and two. So I'll highlight those. and click done which changes their color to this nice pink color and we'll move on to the tool strip control before we do that we ought to look at the menu strip uh, coding I wrote with the expanded out since it was probably a little hard to see and uh, especially on YouTube so the the name got by default amazingly a Superman tool strip menu item which is weird because it's not the tool strip it was the menu strip and then the click event and then the code looked like picture box one which was the name of the picture box dot and the image property and then we have the uh, the namespace of our uh, project or the solution name of our project too which is Windows Basic GUI and dot properties dot resources and then the name of the actual uh, picture just slide it over that were, were selected that was a resource saved with the project which was uh, underscore 250 px Superman in the case of Superman and Batman small in the case of Batman and Green Lantern in the case of Green Lantern and so on. Now in the form design view what we want to do is go down and find a tool strip and you can either double click on it or drag it over. I'll just double click on it and that puts a tool strip at the top. Actually puts it underneath the uh, the menu items which I'd rather have it above. So to uh, put the tool strip above the uh, menu strip, basically right click on it and select uh, send to back and that will put it on top. And as with the uh, menu strip you can put in standard uh, tool strip items. If you click on the uh, little rectangle in the upper right hand corner of the, the tool strip which pops up the uh, common task pop-ups and select uh, insert standard item and then you'll see the standard items but uh, we actually don't want that so once again I'll delete the tool strip right click and delete and put on another tool strip starting from scratch and if you click on a drop down for the tool strip you see you can add a button, a label, a split button, a drop down button, a separator, a combo box, a text box or a progress bar. It's more standard to have a button so we'll just select button and for the image for the button we'll make this Superman so change the uh, change the name first of all because I keep putting in the to like TSB for tool strip button and Superman I forgot to do that a number of times in the past in this group then go down to the image property select that and then click on the ellipse and we already have a bunch of pictures saved for the uh, the uh, big pictures so we can just use one of these for the icon although it'll be so small you won't really be able to see it unless you actually are Superman but uh, at least they'll look different the colors and everything will look different so we'll be able to distinguish them I'll just go into pause mode and I'll do that for the other four buttons. 
Actually, I'll show you one more. That'll uh, just go over and do a name of uh, TSB Batman. And go to the image, hit the ellipse, uh, click on uh, Project Resource File, and select Batman Small. And OK. And you see that puts the icon with the Batman in it. You can distinguish it, but you can't really see it. OK, I'm pause mode. I've done that for all. Uh, five buttons now and I'll select the Superman button we go over and we see that it's uh, TSB Superman and a thing that makes it really useful especially because the icons are so hard to see is uh, something called the tool called the tooltip uh, the tooltip text I'll uh, select tooltip text and then I'll type in Superman and basically what a tooltip is is something that appears when your cursor goes over the top of buttons in the old days you used to have to click every button in the world to figure out what it did but now with the tooltip just put the cursor over it and you can see what it does I'll do the same tooltip for the other four buttons now or, or the tooltip with the appropriate name <laughs> <laughs> I won't call them all Superman. And now if we uh, save the uh, the program and hit uh, start debug which compiles and runs it we'll see all our nice icons and when we put our uh, cursor over it it has a tooltip that says the name Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, Green Lantern, and The Flash. I'm not sure if you can see that, but uh, I don't think it helps to magnify it. Although I notice if you magnify it, you can almost make out the figures on the uh, the icons. Amazing. Well, I close the program and we're back in the form. And the trouble with this is if you click on the buttons, they won't do anything. So we need to add code to the buttons in the usual way. In the, the design mode, we double click on uh, each button. I'll double click on Superman. And that takes us to a uh, handler function called TSB Superman, which is the name of the button, and then the click event. And what we want this to do is already handled by the uh, handler function superman tool strip menu item click that we created when we created the menu strip so I'll just uh, copy the name of that function including both the arguments and right click and say uh, copy and now back in the TSB superman click event handler I right click and say paste this is basically a call to the same handler routine that the when you click on a menu item it goes to but the parameters are wrong because we don't need the types defined we need the names defined because they're the same names as are passed to the toolbar basically what we're doing is we're taking the names from the parameters of our toolbar handler uh, subroutine and passing it to the menu handler subroutine so all I need to add now is a semicolon to make it the correct format and we're saying anytime the user clicks on a toolbar button vector them over to this the appropriate menu item handler routine. So we don't have to rewrite that code multiple times. We just hook the routines into each other. Alright, well I've added the same code 
or the same technique to each of the handler functions for the tool strip buttons now where they're in the case of Superman it's calling the same uh, handler as the uh, Superman menu item in the case of Batman button it's calling the same handler as the Batman menu item in the case of Wonder Woman it's calling the same handler as the Wonder Woman handler function and so on we could have written that it's only one line of code so we could have just written that line of code uh, in each of the handlers but one of the problems with doing that is then we have the code in two different places and we have to make sure the codes in sync so if we just put the code in the code for the uh, menu strip and then we refer back to the menu strip for any other type of selector that we use uh, that way we only have to change the code in one place and it's changed for everybody so it's generally a good coding practice but now if we click on the uh, Superman button you see Superman appears Batman Batman appears Wonder Woman Wonder Woman appears Green Lantern the various Green Lanterns appear Hal Jordan John Stewart Kyle Rayner Guy Gardner and Kilowog <laughs> and we click on the flash and various of the flashes appear although there's actually quite a few more flashes than are there. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this lesson. I think uh, it's invaluable. You very rarely see a Windows program that doesn't have a menu and a tool strip bar. So uh, knowing how to do this is invaluable in terms of creating a standard Windows application. And the next lesson we'll look at the third standard thing that's in almost every Windows application which is a context menu. Until then, uh, I'll see you in Lesson 4 and focus and learn a lot.